Okay, question two. Let's go. So the function f is defined by the following. Okay. Show that this function can be written as a linear one, as in a over bx plus c, where each of these terms are constants. Okay, now, if you guys haven't already spotted this, I want you guys to have a look at the last term, the 4x squared minus 25. This thing, you have to immediately spot and realize that this can be factorized using difference of two squares. So I call it dots here. And in fact, 4 squared minus 25, if you use the difference of two squares, i.e. the double bracket method, the way it works is that you square root 4x squared, and which will give you 2x on both, and square root 25 will give you 5 on both, with a plus minus sign attached. This is literally a difference of two square numbers, with 4x squared being one square number and 25 being another. So this is something we have to literally spot from the get-go. Otherwise, you could get, uh, or otherwise you could make a really big mistake. Now that's all right. So when you do that, you'll realize that in fact this lower bracket here is actually made up of 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. So essentially, when you when you combine this to a single uh, single fraction, you need to make sure that every single denominator has the same terms. So for example, the first um, fraction is missing 2x minus 5. So this implies that you're going to times up and down by uh, 2x minus 5, whereas the second fraction is missing 2x plus 5. So times that by 2x plus 5 up and down. Okay. So when you do that, you you can act, then you can actually combine this to a single fraction. So it looks like this. So times in 6 by 2x minus 5, times in 2 by 2x plus 5, and then adding all these together, all over the common denominator, you can then simplify it. So now all you have to do is just literally tidy up. So what I did, I just worked to the top of the fraction just to save time. And this is what I recommend in the exam. Don't waste time repeating the fraction over and over. Just write a little note, okay, I'm working with the top half only, and just expand and simplify. And then when you get to this stage, factorize as much as you can. In this case, you can only factorize eight, and voila, you got two x plus five on the top half. So essentially the function becomes something simple. And then you can just cancel out, and you're left with eight over two x minus five. And that perfectly fits the a over bx plus c. That's it. All done. And if you want to finish this off, this means that where a is 8, b is 2, and c is negative 5. And yeah, really easy actually. Now, let's look at part b here. So find the inverse function and state its domain. Now, quick tip here. Um, the domain and range of an inverse function is actually the opposite of, a, of the regular function. For example, here we see that the, the domain of the regular f is 4, is x greater than 4. This implies that the range of the inverse function is also bigger than 4. So domain of function equals range of um, inverse function. So I made a note here somewhere. So this is something useful. So the range of fx equals the domain of the inverse of fx, whereas the domain of fx equals the range of the inverse. So a very useful tip. Now let's go ahead and crack this down here. Yeah? So, so to find the inverse, always start down with this step here. So I always say let x equal the function of y, in other words, this is a function x from part a, and then therefore just copy it down. So this means x equals function of y, so replace this function here with y, so you've got 8 over 2y minus 5, and then we have therefore x equals 8 over 2y minus 5. So you can kind of see we just literally flip the letters around. And to find the inverse, just make y the subject. So here we can multiply 2y minus 5 across to clear the fraction, expand the bracket on the left side to get 2xy minus 5x, and just rearrange to make y subject. So what I did is I added 5x five, five across and then divided 2x to get something like this. And then looking at this head on, we can see straight away the domain here, which is um, like what values x can take. When you have a fraction, and always remember this, is that you cannot divide by a zero. So in other words, the bottom half cannot equal zero. So that's why I wrote 2x doesn't equal zero. Therefore, x doesn't equal zero. So this is the domain. This means that we can say for certain that x cannot be 0. Now, there is more values, and that's something where, where it can actually slip you up. The only way to find more values is to go back to the original statement that said x is greater than 4 for the function, and realize that's the range. Now, what I would do here is let's just work with the regular function for now, and I'll show you what I did. And I advise you guys to do this for all the questions. So, I would make a table for the original function, yeah? Whatever you get for the range, that's going to equal the domain for the inverse function. So let's let's find the range of fx. This will pretty much give us the domain of the inverse. So what do we have? So let's start with, since x is bigger than 4, let's start with value 4. Because if you plug in x equals 4, 
you'll, fi you'll find out the, 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 the value where it cannot equal. So when x equals 4, I got 8 over 3. And then I tried other values. So let's try increasing values. So plug in x equals 5, you get a slightly smaller value of 8 over 5. I tried 50, you got 8 over 95. So you can see so far it's getting smaller, right? Now this infinity sign, this is just literally me in the calculator smashing 99999. If you try it in the calculator, you're going to get an answer which is so close to zero. So basically what it means is that if you keep, you know, putting more nines, you're going to get an answer which isn't zero but close to zero. So we can see that the value starts from 8 over 3 but not at it, but then sh quickly shrinks down to zero. So we can say that the range is clearly from zero to 8 over 3. And if that's the range of fx, that means the domain of the inverse is just the same thing but with x. That's it. So remember, range is the y-axis, domain is x. So this is really um, a little quick tip. If you guys understood it, please let me know. Um, if you want more clarification this one or more examples, again, let me know in the comments and um, I'll try and hook you guys up with more, more practice. But anyways, if you enjoyed this, give me a like, share with your friends and um, subscribe.